right, so Ready Player One, let's talk about it. This is a, uh, uh, let Tom go let's first? Let's ask our guest what he thought, because right. you and I yes. run our yaps enough on the spoiler app. And Tom is in the tech world, uh -huh. so he understands the technology. And He uh, lives in the stacks yes. in the Oasis. Yes, <laughs> yes, and yeah, and, uh, and he spends uh, most of his time in the Oasis. Yeah, uh, no, that's the interesting thing about this movie is a lot of the tech that was really futuristic when the book came out in 2011 just looks plausible. In right. 2018, right. in the movie, uh, and it just looks like a couple years from now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. VR. Yeah, it's that's like, oh, that's that a nicer away. model of the Oculus Rift. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, I we we read the book for another podcast I do called Sword and Laser, a science fiction and fantasy book club. Back when it came out, mm -hmm. uh, so big fan of the book uh, and Ernie Klein. And my wife got to see a preview before I got to see the movie. When mm -hmm. she explained some of the changes that they made from the book to this, I thought I was going to hate it. Mm -hmm. I, she's like, well, we ha it's got this kind of love story, and Spielberg changed this, and this person doesn't die, and this and that. All of, it's, it's not really unusual things that you change when you adapt a book, right. but they were things that I loved about the book. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that changed my opinion, but when I went and finally sat down and watched the movie, Everything just clicked. Everything fell into place. I'm like, oh, I get why he did that. Oh, okay. Well, he paid that off. He set that up. And I really enjoyed the movie as sort of a different riff on the same story. It was right. it was Steven Spielberg saying, Well, let me tell my version of Ernie Klein's story. Which mm -hmm. I think is a I think we've talked about it a fair amount on this show, but it, it always bears repeating is like I think people need to when people it's not like the book. Yeah, they're two different mediums. Yes. It'll never be mm -hmm. the, nothing will ever be the book. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, sometimes a, a filmmaker can really fuck it up. Right. You know, and, and you have, you have justifiable reasons to be mad in my opinion. But or sometimes I, even bring it to another level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can take it like, wow, that was w beyond my wildest dreams. But I think it's, I think it's cool what you said, Tom, of, of it was just Spielberg going, and, and I haven't read the book. I'm the one guy here who hadn't read the book. So um, it's the one thing for me where I was like, Okay, yeah, let them just make their interpretation because it's a completely different medium. And, and, and you know, you have to visualize everything, obviously, when you read the book. And this is movie is so visual, yes. you know. So it, in some ways, the story might be better suited for the for on screen because we get to go inside the oasis and see what it looks like and see that visually what the oasis versus the real world looks like. Yeah, yeah. Well, probably one of the biggest changes was the actual challenges because right. in the book... Um, you know, you've got two characters playing joust, yeah. you know, visually. Is, it's that's, an iconic part of the book. Yes, too. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, visually, I'm like, that's not as interesting as a giant race with the the Mach 5 yeah. and, you know, the Batmobile from the 60s and, uh, you know, going through uh, a city with King Kong and, you know, the Jurassic Park T-Rex. So yeah. I totally get why that was changed. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and there's things like that that are visual that you have to change to make it look better. I get that. Mm -hmm. Spielberg also made it a Spielberg story. He, yes. he he definitely molded the love story into being his kind of love story. Right. And I don't want to get spoilery, but you know, there's a message at the end that is definitely Stephen's message. Right. I, mm -hmm. I don't know that Ernie disagrees with it, but but mm -hmm. it's it's not the message that's in the book. Go outside, kids. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of stuff outside, so you can turn some things off. Now, uh, you grew up in the '80s, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I was yeah. I turned ten in 1980, so yeah. Right. It's teen years. All did you have the Atari 2600? No, uh, my friend Jonathan Pennington did though, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a love hate relationship with Jonathan. Fucking Pennington, man. Yeah. With but 2600. I saved up for a 2600 and was going to match Jonathan Pennington. Uh, went to probably a Kmart. I don't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. And my dad said, you can take the $99 that you saved up mowing lawns and get that, or I will give you matching funds and you can get the $200 TI-99 4A. Ah, the uh, Texas Instruments computer yeah. that you so, could actually which program. Was a computer, and right? that mm -hmm. was why his podcast was born. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> uh, and I, I couldn't resist. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, well, it's mm -hmm. TI Invaders, not Space Invaders, but fine. Okay, right, fine. Right, right. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it had it, all the knockoff games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was I like, think Hunt the Wumpus was the one TI specific game that only mm -hmm. they had. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I had to go over to Jonathan's house, but but I played all the TI games. I played Com 
Commodore games later. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I used to have a friend down the street, Donald. Uh, we would change trade floppy disks, and mm-hmm. back when that's how you that did was a big thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, before the internet, where you know the literally the data could download back and forth is you would trade cartridges. Yeah. Or uh, or floppy disks, yeah. and then you know, all of a sudden, if one got bent, your game was ruined. Yeah, so, <laughs> you bent your floppy, and there was the hack to use a hole punch uh, on the floppy so that you could get twice as much data stored on it that Donald showed me, and I was like, "Right, oh my God, they, they, that works. That's amazing. <laughs> give me give me Pitfall now. Yes, <laughs> have room." <laughs> So uh, one of the things I really liked about this movie, uh, like which I loved about the book, is like it was uh, also it was a futuristic story, but also a walk down memory lane. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this was literally like Easter egg the movie. Yeah, you know, you, all the pop culture references. Now it wasn't limited to the '80s. We'll get more in this into the spoiler, but you know, it was great to see Iron Giant and you know a lot of some stuff from the '90s. And you know, one of the big iconic scenes is. Um, you know, this is uh, this is not a spoiler. This is uh, about in the middle of the movie. Is they changed one of the challenges to from one movie to another. So instead of War Games, it's The Shining. So I think that was uh, really which what, it came out in eighty. So it's almost seventies. It's kind of very seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it also uh, we were talking about it more on the spoiler. It really feels like it was a tribute to Kubrick. Like, uh, mm-hmm. like was one of the things that uh, Spielberg wanted to do. Like he contacted Gene Wilder. He wanted him to actually be the uh, um, uh, what's what's the guy's Halliday. name? Halliday. He wanted right. him to be Halliday. Uh, and Gene Wilder said no before he passed away. Uh, it's interesting, you know. I don't think Spielberg is used to hearing the word no, but to hear it from Gene Wilder, it must be uh, it must have been like, yeah, okay. If I'm hearing no from Gene Wilder, the guy from, I've earned it. The guy from yeah. Straight Time is telling yeah, me, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> from Willy Wonka, just told me no. Uh, jump in a chocolate river. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing too we were talking we, is is I think the 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 switch from War Games to The Shining actually is better because War Games is cool, but if you watch it now, it's pretty dated. You know, like some some of it, I mean, some of the dialogue, some of the, it's very sort of hyper-referential for that moment in time. Whereas The Shining, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a movie. Are you going to use the word timeless? Yeah, it is a little, it is a little bit, but I mean, yeah, there's only, there's only, there's not a lot of things in there where you go, oh, that was only from the 70s or the early 80s or whatever and you know a guy right. going nuts with an axe i mean that is timeless yeah 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 that's uh that I mean, doesn't that that doesn't go oh uh that's <laughs> people don't not, do that's that not scary anymore. yeah yeah <laughs> I'm like no okay and i can I guess, see that yeah. I, and I the get creepiness it. of it because that's the other thing being too. in a hotel that's a ba- you know that's empty that hotel is still there. It's the Timberline Lodge up in uh, in Portland, up outside of Portland, Oregon. I'm yeah. sure if it's empty, it's just as it's creepy. It's terrifying. Yeah, There's, it's completely terrifying. Mm-hmm. Well, so, and the difference is, War Games is very computer oriented, right? Yes. Uh, so adding The Shining, I think, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way because it's horror, mm-hmm. uh, and you've you've now like stretched the genre. But I think that's one of the things Spielberg did that makes this movie more accessible. And again, if you want the book exactly, you're going to be disappointed. But it was fun to see this as something new. Like, okay, well, let's see how these characters act in a horror mm-hmm. situation, which right. we didn't really get in mm-hmm. the book. No, mm-hmm. not at all. It was really a uh, a mix of genres for sure. And it, but but it's but it's, I mean, literally, War Games was about a computer. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. going crazy. So, but the thing I the, to me it speaks to. This was taking this story from the medium of the written page to the medium of the screen. So mm. if you're going to take it to the silver screen, then you should have an iconic movie referenced in there, not just a video game. Yes, because mm-hmm. it visually was like fantastic mm-hmm. um this film and it, in the uh in the book there was a, a uh it, it it was a uh, a big thing about being inside movies like it was what do they call the movie sinks yeah something, something like, like that. that something like that where like you could actually instead of watching movies in the future you could actually be in them mm. so that was one of the uh you know one of the things like you could just take any movie and just kind of put yourself in so uh, there were differences from the book, but uh, like you, I enjoyed the movie on its own, just to, you know, as a big fun popcorny type movie. Yeah, yeah. I thought the um, the world was more established in the book, but you've got more room and more pages and more time, and so you see, so it feels like uh, 
like some of the stuff in the uh, the movie, you're like, oh, I'd like to learn more about that or how that works, or even like the Oasis, like uh, how much, like like you know how you gain coin from when other players die. Like, all right, can you spend that in the real world? Like there was like all the stuff was a little vague, like as far as like how the Oasis kind of worked, like um, uh, like 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 what what did you have to pay to use it like you know is there level grinding why are these people there... who are living in storage containers able to afford you know vr headsets and right walk right yeah, right yeah, so exactly. so that was uh you know what's the accessibility of this world and and things like that so but all that is actually in the book you know it all kind of gets explained yeah in, and in the, the oasis book. is even more pervasive in education and business yeah which they kind of let about leave, that. leave that out yeah i, I forgot to tell you that graham that was really interesting like uh um, they, the Oasis was set up. It wasn't just a gaming world. It's like you used it for everything. You went to school in the Oasis. Uh, like you put the VR headset on, you went to a classroom. Like it was, uh, it was, it was there where it was literally every corner of your life was, uh, the Oasis was there. Mm -hmm. So, which was really, uh, you know, they, they didn't really get into that in the movie, but that, that was kind of like, uh, and I really think like, it's almost prophetic. I really think that's where, as we go to like colleges offering online classes mm -hmm. and all these things, you wonder like, you know, is, are you universities, are we going to be all virtual pretty soon? I do wonder though, if, <clears throat> you know, down the road when Oasis type technology becomes commonplace, if it's going to look entirely different. Because there's all of these headsets that are mixed reality that allow you to see the real world around you mm. and then mix it in a little more than virtual reality, which is like, I'm blind if I, right. rather than seeing what's in the virtual world. And I wonder if this movie's going to look super dated because of that. If we're going to be like, oh, who thought point. you'd actually walk around with you know, not being able to see or something? Right. <laughs> like, that's crazy, Dad. Everything's going to be Google Glass where you get both. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, uh, Microsoft has the HoloLens that is that, which is way better than the Google Glass now. Uh, but so what's the Microsoft HoloLens? It's it's uh, headset. That's why we had Tom on. I know. I was, I was like, giving yeah. some tech talk. <laughs> Welcome to Daily Tech News Show. Uh, it's a headset where you can just see the world. Like, I would see the room I'm in right now, but it mm -hmm. superimposes things in your field of vision. So that's why it's way better. Google Glass just had the little thing up in the corner that right. you would see. Mm -hmm. This actually lets you, like, put aliens coming through the wall and but it's mm -hmm. actually your wall mm -hmm. uh, or you know you can have a chessboard on on the coffee table and ah. stuff like that it's augmented reality if you've heard that before yes. in mm -hmm. in android and, and ios they have that so it's it's that kind of thing all built into a headset you don't have to plug into a, another mm -hmm. computer how close are we to the um the actual suits that they wore where you actually felt like if someone touches you in the Which Oasis. Which was a cool thing in the movie. Yeah, yeah you actually yeah. feel it on the uh, in, inside the suit. What do they call it, haptic feedback yeah, or something? Yeah, that, that kind of haptic feedback is possible. <laughs> I don't know if people have perfected it to A, where it feels real, <laughs> uh, and B, it's cost effective. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that stuff is, is definitely out there, and the treadmill that he uses is a real product. Is it? Yeah. Because I, I was, I was just saying, one. yeah, I kind of want one. That yeah. omnidirectional treadmill it's looks really cool. It's a few really thousand cool. dollars. It's not nearly as smooth as it as he made it look <laughs> and you have guardrails they like took the guardrails that down for mm -hmm. the purposes of the movie so it, it looks a little more like a cage mm -hmm. um, but yeah that's that's a real thing so now is it used strictly for gaming for like vr for yeah with like an oculus rift or an htc vive oh wow yeah so you could actually make kind of what he what he has in the movie. <laughs> Chris wants to live in the Oasis. Yeah, <laughs> that's sounding more and more appealing. It's not going to look nearly as good, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's the beauty of this is, is you know, the the, uh, the world is unbounded because it, right. it's, it can look as good as movies can make things look, which are much better than we can make games look in real life. Right, right. So, um, but I think we're getting closer. I mean, yeah. you know, we're, you know, you know, World of Warcraft, you know, we're we're getting we're making steps of <laughs> you know that's that was probably i know you had everquest a while back but world of warcraft was really the one that put the mmorgs kind of yeah like into the forefront where these companies were making millions of dollars a month right. just in subscriptions and and and, uh, and that game is still making them millions of dollars right. you know yes. pe people talk about it like it's dead but it's got millions right. of players instead of right. multi-millions of players right, right. it's mm -hmm. it's crazy it's still doing fine yeah 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 not worried about it. mike morham's yeah, yeah. gonna be okay yeah 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 <laughs> he's gonna yeah. get by yeah. so uh but but that's uh 
Uh, what I love about it, too, is like it shows you what the world looks like if you combined all of these things. You combine the online role playing. You combine mm -hmm. like, what was it, Second Life or was the yeah, other right. one? The, For, you know, the, the, the Stanford thing. Yeah. yeah, people would get married inside the mm -hmm. computer. And, yeah. uh, uh, but if you combined all those things, and this is what the book did, like if, would it, what if every aspect of your life was inside the Oasis? And uh, that's just, this is what it would, <laughs> but this is what it would look like if you went to school, you went to college, if you all your uh, time was spent in there, all your and uh, um, and you know some your jobs. Yeah, yeah, you ran your business there. You yeah. ran your errands there. You did mm -hmm. all you your, get your data leaked from there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yep, yep. <laughs> you can get mugged, digitally mugged <laughs> yeah, inside digitally the mugged, Oasis. You can lose all your coins. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That that is one thing they they sort of touch on it, but they don't get into it. The fact that when you get killed, you don't die, but you lose all your stuff. Right. And it's just mm -hmm. available for whoever killed you to take. Right. You don't see them taking it in the movie very often. They, they no. show it kind of all exploding out of you. Right. And in fact, at one point, one character starts to lose it slowly, which I was like, I don't think that's the way it's supposed to work. <laughs> but, yeah, but, a slow faucet of uh, artifacts coming yeah, out of his yeah, arm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, but, but I love being able to see it. I mean, I think that was the biggest thing as a book reader was seeing that world play out in right. front of me was, was, mm -hmm. was fascinating. And I think he did a great job, in fact, making it look a little better than it's described by having just people who were in weird attire. Not, not everything was a reference. Right. Uh, there were a lot of people who were just, you know, obviously supposed to have made up their own look, while there are people who are superheroes and, and video game characters and book characters. And, and mm -hmm. it, it looked like a real world in that respect. Yeah, because everyone just kind of pick their own thing they were like all right well no i want to be sonic the hedgehog and i'm like well no i want to actually create my avatar from scratch yeah and wear the buckaroo bonsai jacket or something oh. yeah you know? yeah yeah all so right. so it was really a, a fun movie uh for sure it's a so. it's a theme park ride yeah 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 that's it that's it and uh, that's exactly the best way to describe it so. my shot first. Kid,